And then we're gonna go over the 22 Chronicles checklist that came out last week. Uh, and talk about, man, it's so burpy. We're gonna try this again. Too much air. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Joe's Card Stash. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, today's video, uh, I'm gonna go over the Burbank Card Show, which is a big card show in LA that I went to this weekend. I'm gonna tell you my experience, you know, what I thought about it. And lastly, we're gonna go over 22 Chronicles. Uh, comes out in a couple days. Probably will come out right when this video comes out. Um, I'm gonna go over the basics of Chronicles and the checklist. And again, let you know what I think of that product and, and my plan for Chronicles. And then at the very end, I'm gonna open up some boxes. Uh, I got two blasters of Select 22. Uh, a friend of mine sent these to me as a gift and I wanna open them up and see what we got. So, should be a fun video. Uh, as always, all the YouTube shit, um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I put out you know content pretty often. I think it's pretty good, all UFC cards. Um, you know, all different parts of, you know, the hobby, you know, investments, singles, uh, grading, opening packs. So I think it's a fun channel. So please subscribe if you're just checking in. And if you're already subscribed, give me that like, you know, uh, give me comments. Tell me, you know, what you think about any of this stuff. I always appreciate it. I always try to get back to you guys. And uh, with that being said, let's, let's get into it. Let's, let's start talking some UFC cards. Let's go. Okay. Uh, the Burbank Card Show. Um, I was really excited when I heard about this show. Um, I live pretty close to Burbank. I'm about 45 minutes away from there. It's put on by Burbank Sports Cards, which is one of the biggest card stores in the country. So I wanted to check it out. I wanted to see, you know, what the UFC presence at a show like this was. And honestly, like, since I've gotten into the hobby, I haven't gone to a card show. So I haven't been to a card show since I was 12 years old, 13 years old. I used to, I was really into baseball cards when I was younger. And I used to go to a card show that was at my local bowling alley. I knew this would be very different. <laughs> so my general plan was to go on Friday, kind of check it out, and then go back on Saturday and Sunday when I knew it was gonna be crazy and maybe get some video, do a vlog. You know, I know these card show vlogs do really well. That was my plan. Um, so I got there on Friday and it was fucking insane. Um, I'm pretty sure the people that run this show know this, but they need a bigger place for this show. It's, I mean, it was like, I mean, like I said, it was on a Friday, so people at work were at work, and it was jam-packed. I mean, you know, this is a giant uh, convention center, and there's 200 tables, and every table you went to, there was five people in front of it, two people behind there, and you're like kind of jumping over them trying to see, I mean, it was, it was craziness. Um, so immediately I was kind of overwhelmed, to be honest. Um, I did a whole round walking through, and I tried to see, you know, who had UFC cards, you know, talk to the dealers a little bit about, you know, how they were selling that type of stuff, but it was so loud and just, you know, you were just constantly being pushed. Someone wanted to get in to look at it. Just, it was very difficult to like relax and look around and stuff like that. So I did a whole round around the entire thing. I get an idea of, you know, the UFC cards and the UFC card dealers. But then I was like, it was very hot and just like crowded. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna go to the hotel, I'm gonna have a beer and then I'll come back. So I went and did that. I had a beer, just relaxed. Came back and there was a line around the entire building to get back in. It was like a two hour wait. They were saying the, the fire marshal had shut down the entrance because there was too many people in there. And at that point I was like, you know what? I, I can't do this, I gotta bounce. I'm just, this isn't, I, I can't spend all day here like, you know, in this giant crowd freaking out. So not the greatest card show for like my first one. Um, it, it, it was what it was. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to such a big card show right away. Probably should have like eased myself in, but I did learn a few things. Um, the first thing that was very apparent walking around was that the UFC card market, as much as, you know, you know, I'm engulfed in it. Like all the people I follow on Instagram are UFC card people. 
you know, most of the YouTubers I follow are UFC card people. So I feel like, you know, the UFC card market is huge. But then you go to a card show like this and you realize right away, we are a tiny, tiny, tiny part of this entire sports card hobby. You know, um, I would say there, there's about 200 tables. I'd say every five tables, you would see a couple UFC cards, just a couple, like a Habib and a Rose or something like that. There was one guy that had a whole showcase of UFC cards. And I talked to him for a minute and he did say that he was very busy, you know, it was very popular, but it was because, you know, people who are interested in UFC cards. That was the only guy to really look at. Almost everyone else was just, like I said, just a few cards here and there. So, um, you know, I was expecting more. I was hoping for more. UFC as a sport is way too popular for the lack of amount of cards that were at this show. You know, and that, that's kind of what brought me into this is I feel like we're in, its, in our infancy and there's so many people who love UFC and if they knew that cards existed, they would be into it. And we just got to spread the word. And that means everybody out there, myself included, tell your friends, show them your collection, tell them how much these things are worth. You know, let's, let's get more people into this because there's tons of people that love UFC. I just don't think there's that many people that know that cards exist. To give you an idea of what the ratios were, and I kind of did this in my head, but basketball was by far the, the, the most popular. Basketball was everywhere. Football, very close second. Uh, baseball was vintage. I was kind of surprised by that, but um, you know, Mickey Mantles, Willie Mays, Hank Aarons, those were extremely popular. They're everywhere. Um, after that, this is where I hoped UFC would be. I hoped UFC would be fourth, but honestly, fourth was soccer. Uh, soccer was a good bit more uh, around than UFC cards. There was multiple people that had whole cases of soccer, which makes sense. I mean, it's one of the most popular sports in the world. Um, and after that, I think that's where UFC does fall. I think we're tied with a bunch of other things. Um, F1, UFC, Marvel, and I, mean, I would say entertainment cards like Star Wars and stuff like that, we're all like in the same realm. Like every showcase or every three showcases had a few of our cards. So we're kind of in that niche, you know, but by the popularity of the sport, I think we can push back in. You know, we might push soccer. Like if we keep going, like people start realizing how, how dope these cards are. I really do hope there's a future where you know things get more popular and I am gonna go to more card shows. I'm not gonna let this deter me. It wasn't the greatest experience. I was hoping to buy stuff. I didn't buy anything because of just how chaotic it was. Maybe next year I'll go again. Hopefully they have more room and it's a little more comfortable. And um, yeah, so that, that was the Burbank card show. Okay, for our next segment, we are gonna talk about Chronicles 22. It's gonna release on 831, which is I think about three days from now. Hopefully I can get this video up by then. Um, the hobby box is presently $195 a box. That's come down. It was about two something. It's, it's coming down. I honestly, I think it's going to come down from there. Um, this should not cost anywhere near as much as select. The, the Chronicles cards aren't as nice as select cards. So I think these car, the, the, the hobby boxes should be about $150 and I think they'll get down there. You might have to wait a week or two, but $150 is where I would buy. Um, you get two, two autos in the hobby box. You get eight cards per pack and six cards per box, 48 cards altogether, I think, if I'm doing the math right. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Chronicles is like a hodgepodge of different sets that Panini puts together. So you get 20 brands. You get, um, and this is just, a, there's more than this. I'm just naming off what I read on the checklist. You get Flux, Contenders, Contenders Optic, uh, uh, Gala, National Treasures, One, Phoenix, Recon, Origins, Crown Royal, and Noir. Uh, some of those are rarer than the others. Gal is very rare. Uh, Noir is very rare. Um, to be honest, I, this isn't my favorite car, set of cards. I, I really don't like them. Um, I'm not a big fan of paper cards. I didn't like Donruss. I don't like Chronicles. I like my cards shiny and prisms and selects and optic. So, um, I probably won't buy into this too much, but it's still a fun rip. I mean, people loved it last year. The cool thing about it is because there's so many sets, there's so many parallels. There's so many, you know, golds and blacks and uh, one of ones. And you, you can really just hit hard with these boxes, but 
in the long run, I mean, you look back at last year's Chronicles, a lot of those cards aren't worth shit anymore because they just oversaturate the market. It's, it's, it's a product that's just too, too saturated. I just, it is what it is. Um, interesting changes from last year. Um, the Gala, which is the big chase hit, this year it seems like it's only rookies, which is kind of cool. Um, you have a Gala that's, you know, Patty Pimlet, you have a Tom Aspinall. Uh, I think there's a, few, there's a bunch of others. Um, honestly, I don't have the list in front of me of everything, but I don't love the Gala cards, but they are all rookies, so those are pretty big cards if you get one of those. Um, the main thing I look at when I look at a new chest checklist is the autos. You know, when you buy these hobby boxes, the autos are super important. So um, when I looked at the autos for this, the first thing I'm looking at is rookies because all year, this has been my biggest critique of Panini, is all year the rookie autos have not been great. Um, honestly, the best ones so far have been Donruss because Donruss had like Sean Brady and, and a few people that you didn't have in Prism. Um, but for the most part, you're getting Tom Aspinall. That's the big one. And then you need no Patty Pimlet, no Shavkat Rachmanov, no Ian Gary, you know, all these guys that I would love to have autos from aren't signing, and I don't know why. It's just tough. There, there's, just, there's just not much to chase as far as rookie autos. Um, this one, I noticed that Jalen Turner did sign in Chronicles, which is pretty dope. I love Jalen. It would be fun to chase his auto, so that's a new addition, but all the rest are who you got all the time. Still no Shavkat, still no Patty. So, you know, it is what it is. One thing that uh, Chronicles does have that Select didn't have is Islam Makachev and Hamzat both have autos. I don't understand why they didn't put those autos in Select. That really bums me out. Select was my favorite product of the year and the main thing that that was missing was Hamzat autos and Islam autos and they were in Donruss, they were in Prism, they're in Chronicles but they weren't in Select and I'm just like why? That was that would have been that would have made Select perfect but so they're in there. I've decided money's running a little low. I've been buying a lot of singles. I don't have a ton of money. I don't think I'm gonna buy any Chronicles packs. I would rather spend my money on Prism and Select, cards I really like, rather than Chronicles. So if you guys wanna watch Chronicle Breaks, um, check out uh, the Golden Octagon. Um, Matt's really good over there. I'm sure he's gonna be opening some. And uh, Chris over at Macy Collectibles. I'll link both of those in the description as well. Both of, those, blah, 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 blah. both of those guys are gonna break open Chronicles and I highly recommend them. They both know their shit about UFC. They're great dudes, really good for the hobby and I'm not gonna be opening it. So if you wanna go watch someone open Chronicles, go there. Um, I'm gonna be opening Select and Prism just cause I like those way better and then seeing what comes out next. I'm really hoping Optic comes out. Um, They've, they've kind of teased that they might put out Optic, so hopefully. Um, anyway, um, that's about it. That's about it for Chronicles. Um, you know, I'm excited to see it. I, I might get FOMO, who knows, maybe I'll buy some, but for the most part, I don't think I'm gonna buy it. I, I, I regret buying it last year. I don't really like the cards I got from last year, and I don't think they held value, so it is what it is. My opinion, if you guys love it, cool. Um, but that's it, let's get into opening some packs, the fun shit. Let's go. Okay, last but not least, uh, opening some cards, my favorite. Um, I got a couple of blaster boxes in the mail from my friend, Joshua Diener, um, friend of the channel. He's a big sports card collector. He knew I love UFC cards. He found these at Target, sent them over to me. So I wanna open them and give him some love. He's you know, one of my longest friends and I'm super excited. He loves cards as much as I do. So thank you, Joshua. Hopefully we're gonna get some good stuff here. Um, what I'm looking for, um, UFC Select, my favorite cards coming out of these retail blasters are the mezzanine tie-dyes. I think those are beautiful cards and you get one of those with a big fighter, that's a huge one. So that's what I'm looking for, mezzanine tie-dye. Let's go. All right, here we go. Uh, wish me luck. Let's see what we get. I haven't opened a ton of these. I think I've opened two so far. Uh, you get, what do you get? Six packs uh, per box, four cards per pack. 
And I do love, honestly, I really love what um, Panini has done with retail this year. These are fun to open, and it wasn't like that always. I don't think Prism cards are too fun to open. The select ones have been really fun because they added more chase cards. So, you know, you can get a lot. You can get gold, you can get tie-dyes. Tie-dyes in, in retail is crazy. That's so sick. Okay, here we go. Number one is Billy Quarantino, rookie card. Cynthia Cavello. Billy Quarantello, octagon side. And we have a flash prism of Kamara Usman with two giant print lines. But, um, you know, Usman's a beast. I honestly think he's going to come back. Uh, I don't think that win is going to define him. That was kind of a crazy kick. I love Leon Edwards, but I think Usman was winning that entire fight. And I think if there's a third one, he wins that fight too. So uh, good time to buy Usman, maybe. Pack number two. We got Robert Whitaker. He's fighting this weekend against Marvin Vittori. Ian Gary, one of the best up-and-coming rookies. Sorry. Uh, okay. Big Ian Gary fan. Uh, next is Zhang Wei Li. Probably, I don't know, I think she's definitely fighting for the belt. Uh, I think Zhang Wei Li might be champ again soon. Let's see if we got a rookie on our orange flash. We don't. Aljamain Sterling, who in my opinion is probably going to lose the belt in October, but we'll see. We'll see if TJ can get it done. Next pack. Come on. We are looking for a mezzanine, a rare mezzanine. Let's see if we can get one. The Goat, Valentina Shevchenko. Israel Adesanya, Michael Bisbing, the count, and looks like we got a silver Brock Lesnar. That's actually a decent card. That might sell for a couple bucks. Brock Lesnar silver, always popular, Brock Lesnar. Okay, let's see what we can get next. Who do you guys got in this weekend's fight? Let me know. Uh, you got Gone. You got Taitu Avasa. I got Gone. I think I mentioned that. Hamzat Chemaev. Does he beat Nate Diaz? I think he beats Nate Diaz all day, every day. Bilal Muhammad. Nate Diaz. That's kind of crazy. He was so close to Hamzat. And Jimmy Crute. That's a silver, I think. Is it a silver? Yeah, it is a silver. Jimmy Crew. Okay, two more packs. Still looking for something a little more rare than these cards. DC, Daniel Cormier, Mannion Fournette. I really like her. I think she's a great rookie. I'd love to get some numbered stuff. I think um, she could be a problem for Valentina. Cyril Gahan, there's the man right there. Uh, I think he wins this weekend. Uh, that's a premier level. And do we have a rookie on our orange flash? We don't. We have Alexander Volkanovsky, the champ. Pound for pound now after uh, Camaro lost. So Volk is the pound for pound champ. All right. Last pack for this blaster. All right. Okay, we got... Alex Perez, Telia Santos, rookie card, Jared Cannonier, and a rookie, Andre Muniz, tricolor. Is this the one that's numbered? It is the one that's numbered. Damn. 03, uh, 03, 3 of 49, Andre Muniz, rookie card. That's pretty dope. I like him. I like Andre Muniz a lot. We're going to. We're gonna sleeve that one, that's a good card. Um, that might be the best card I've got out of a blaster so far. Um, pretty happy with that. I like Andre. Uh, last time I saw him fight, he was pretty dominant and that's a really beautiful card. I don't know why 
Some of the tricolors are numbered and some aren't, but out of 49 from a blaster of a good rookie, that's, that's huge. That's a big card. Thank you, Joshua. You picked a good one. All right, uh, here we go. Last blaster. See what we can get. Let's see if we can get a tie dye that beats that tricolor. Okay. Ah. All right, we have ourselves six packs. There we go. Okay. Let's go with pack number one. Good luck. Pack number one has Brandon Roy Val, Abub Abubakar Nurmagomedov, rookie card. Ricky Simone, rookie card, premier level. And our orange flash is Paulo Costa, who just beat Luke Rockhold in a crazy ass fight in which he got blood smeared all over his face. And I don't know. I'm not big on either of those guys, so it was interesting. I'll give you that. All right, next pack. Tito Ortiz, who trains here at Ruka sometimes. Chris Dawkins, rookie. Marlon Cheeto Vera, my favorite fighter. And our last card is a premier level. That looks like Khabib. Habib Namargamedov, is that also numbered? Oh my God, that's a giant card, holy shit. 45 of 49 Habib, tricolor, premier level. That is a really, really big card. Um, damn, that's, that's a big one. I'm pretty psyched on that. This might be a grading candidate. It looks really clean. Um, yes, I will probably be grading this. Wow, wow, for real. Two numbered cards and two blasters. As much shit as I talked about retail, this is amazing. I mean, dude, there's just two retail blasters and I got really, really dope cards, so I'm pretty happy right now. Um, Conor McGregor, ever heard of him? I haven't. Uh, Paulo Costa, again. Dustin Poirier, this is the vet pack. And we have a Global Icons of Charles Oliveira. That's a dope one. Um, flash Prism, yeah. I forget what they call these things. Yeah, a Silver Flash or something like that. Uh, that's a dope one. I think Charles also wins. I'm kind of iffy on that one, I don't know. Him or Islam is a tough one for me. Um, I'm rooting for Charles, but I don't know if he can beat Islam. Islam's a beast. So he's a beast with Habib coaching him. That's, that's pretty crazy. Uh, Dana Henderson. Marcin Tybora. Oh, here's our mezzanine. It's just a silver Justin Gaethje. And our orange flash is Amanda the Lioness Nunez. Also a pretty good card. This, this box is pretty good, man. Octagon side, orange flash, Amanda Nunez. Uh, not new champ, well, kind of, return champ. Um, I knew she was gonna win that fight. Last two packs. We got Sirogan. Kamaru Usman, Rodrigo Bontorain, and we have, looks like Kamaru Usman again. Dude, is this number? If this is numbered, I'm gonna fucking flip out. No, it's not. It's just a regular tricolor. That's crazy how close these are. Oh, I guess it's kind of a teal versus a green. But um, yeah, still, I mean, Kamaru Usman, tricolor. I'll take it. All day, I'll take it. Last pack. 
Here we go. I mean, these these boxes have been great. I can't ask for much more. I, if, if I were to get something else in here, I would kind of lose my mind. So probably not getting much, but very happy. Daniel Rodriguez, rookie card. Jimmy Crute. Francis Ngannou. And lastly is Islam Makachev. Is that a prism? It is a prism. That's another good one. Uh, Islam Makachev uh, retail prism. Pretty dope card. Probably try to sell it around the time of his fight. And there you go. Uh, I mean, you, you really can't complain. I mean, these are beautiful. Two numbered out of 49 cards out of two blasters, like Panini, you killed it this year with select retail. Like, dude, these are so much better than the Prism Blasters. I think the Prism Hobby Box, or the Select Hobby Boxes were way better than the Prism Hobby Boxes. Select is the shit. I'm gonna be buying it as long as I can. Um, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Like, comment, comment on any of the stuff I've talked about tonight. Uh, I'd love to hear from you, and I'll talk to you next time.